Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to put labor demand and labor supply together to form an actual perfectly competitive labor market. So, let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is, just like before, uh, label our axes. So we've got Q for quantity of labor, and then a lowercase w for the wage rate. Remember that we said that labor demand is downward sloping. It represents the firm, so at higher wage rates, less workers are demanded or wanted. And then supply is upward sloping um, because it represents individuals who want to work at higher wage rates. And then, of course, we can draw uh, equilibrium here at the, at the intersection point. And then if we go to the bottom here, this would be the equilibrium quantity of labor that the market will offer. And then uh, we have our equilibrium wage rate, or the wage that each worker will uh, work for. And that wage is constant. Every worker gets the exact same wage, identical skills. So that is a labor market. We did it. There we go. Of course, we can shift uh, the curves, and then that will change the uh, wage rate and the quantity of labor. So, for instance, if we said there's a greater demand for the product, which means a greater demand for the resources, remember, derived demand, that would move the demand curve to the right. And then, of course, that would change uh, the equilibrium quantity. It would increase it. And then that would also change our equilibrium wage, EQ1, EW1. So we have a higher equilibrium wage, higher equilibrium quantity of labor, very familiar to what we would be doing with product markets. Uh, one question I sometimes get from students is, could we see a double shift kind of a question? I personally have never seen AP ask a uh, double shift question where you move both the labor supply and the labor demand curve. Of course, it would work just like you would expect with pro uh, product markets. One of the two variables would be uh, indeterminate. The other one would change. So you can practice with that if you want. Not something I'm going to show here since it normally doesn't come up on the AP exam. Now, suppose we were at uh, EW here, and let's say that uh, the government notices there's a lot of workers who just can't live off that wage. So what could you do? Well, you could impose something I think a lot of us are familiar with. We hear it about in the news sometimes. You could impose a higher minimum wage. So the minimum wage is the minimum amount employers are allowed to pay their workers. And when it works in the labor market, it acts just like a product price floor that we have seen um, in a past unit, right? It acts as a price floor in the labor market. It keeps the wage from falling below a certain uh, value. And so how would we model a minimum wage in our labor market? So what I've done is I've gone ahead and redrawn um, another perfectly competitive labor market. I've set up my EW for my equilibrium wage, EQ for equilibrium quantity of labor. And so how would we impose a binding or effective minimum wage? Well, if you remember from a past unit, a price floor to be effective has to be set above the equilibrium price, in this case, the equilibrium wage rate. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put it in green, and we're just going to set it above the equilibrium wage. We'll call this uh, min W. It really doesn't matter what you call it. So there's our equilibrium, or sorry, that's there's our minimum wage set above the equilibrium wage rate. Now, what is the effect of imposing this minimum wage? Well, of course, you're going to get a higher wage rate. But there is a noticeable change in the market. So I'll do this in yellow here. So what we're going to see is that, yes, more workers are going to want to work now, of course, because they're going to get paid more. So we have a higher quantity supplied of labor, but fewer employers are going to want to hire workers or they're going to hire fewer workers 
because the wage rate's higher. And so we have a lower quantity demanded of workers or their labor. And so we see now that the quantity demanded of labor is less than the quantity supplied of labor. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is there's going to be a surplus of workers. You're going to have people who want to work that can't because they can't find a job because there's so many people like, oh man, the higher minimum wage, I'm gonna go get that job. And there's only so many jobs to go around, even fewer because employers can't afford to make or uh, pay that higher wage to more, as many workers as they were paying before. Now, this is kind of controversial because a lot of economists will argue that actually raising the minimum wage would not be a bad thing for an economy. You put more money in people's hands, that'll increase spending. There's a lot of different arguments to, to go for and against a minimum wage, and I'm certainly not making a case here that a minimum wage would, in fact, cause unemployment. But using the model that we have, <clears throat> excuse me, using the model that we have here, we can see that based on the model, it would cause a surplus of labor. Of course, as you get into more advanced economics and you develop more sophisticated models, we can, you know, uh, you know, kind of pick apart that theory on whether or not minimum wage increases actually cause uh, unemployment. So that's all for this video on modeling perfectly competitive labor markets and labor market equilibrium. Until next time, have a great day.